Hey, Sedge, what's in the box? I'm glad you asked. I just got this new uh, mini block plane. It's called the HP8 okay. from Bridge City. And like anything from Bridge City, it comes in an unbelievable shipping uh, box. Okay, it comes with a deluxe owner's manual. <laughs> it comes with the block plane. Let me get it out of here. This is actually beautiful. Oh, wow. Okay, and a 2.5 millimeter wrench. That alone is worth two hundred dollars. <laughs> okay, so let's go through this. Why did I get another block plane? I got too many of them already. Ah, you can never have too many block planes. So we're gonna go over this block plane, and I'll show you how innovative it is because I am just blown away on how this is put together. Awesome. Let's do it. You betcha. So big D, check this out. I've had this out of the box already, okay? And I want your first impression of this um, mini block plane. So I'm gonna put it in your hand, and what do you think? Wow, that's like really, really light. Okay, so there's a reason. And I love this, because I've had some old Stanleys in the past, and they were made out of aluminum. They're very rare. This whole sole is made out of aluminum. One of the great things about that is it's light in weight. Mm -hmm. Okay, fits perfect in your pouch if you wanted to, but it won't ever rust. So there you go. So the first thing I noticed when I looked when I looked on the internet at this thing is this pat right here, and this is known as a cap iron, and this is your locking knob or your your tensioner. But I didn't understand that part. That's what holds the blade down. Oh. I know that's a Norris style adjuster, but we'll go over that in a minute. But when I release this, this is what you release to adjust your blade to and fro. But this part here, check this out, this is a little magnet. Oh, isn't that sweet? Yeah. So the angle here of this adjuster or tensioner goes right in this little detent here and it actually actuates perfect to tension the blade down. Wow. Effortlessly. So there you go. So here's the blade, and I'm going to take it out, and it's got two notches on it, and it goes right here. Okay, and this is a Norris style adjuster. So when I set this up, I'm going to put it right here, and I'll adjust it. This is a bevel up, which all block planes are. Okay. Okay, but I want you to notice this, and hopefully Chris can get this right here. This came honed or sharpened with a micro bevel. Your typical 25 degree is right here, but then they put at Bridge City Tools, they put a micro bevel. Oh wow. So what's the thing I've always taught you about any blade out of the uh, a brand new plane? It needs to be beveled, right? Nope, it needs to be honed. Honed. So just a quick honing. Now I will show you this. Out of the plane, it is pretty wicked sharp but what i want to do is i want to take it over and just uh, hone it ever so slightly okay so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to take it there's your 25 degree and there's your 30 degree mm -hmm. so i'm just going to take it to this wheel just like this like this is my honing wheel and i'm going to take it like this i'm going to bring it down now i'm hitting that 25 degree right now i can feel it but I'm going to bring it up and you can actually hear it on that micro bevel. Mm -hmm. And you're going to see how this produces a really nice shiny edge and you'll see it right there. So now you're ready to put this back in the block plane, the HP8, and get going. Let's do it. So we got a really good hone on the blade. Yep. And I'm going to place that first hole on top of this post. But what I want to get in here, hopefully you can see it, this adjuster, which comes back and forth, okay, has an extremely fine thread. So when we set this up and do our adjustments before we cut, you're going to notice there's no slop either way, back or forth. So it makes it effortless to get absolutely precise micro adjustments and fine shavings awesome and I'll show you how to do that so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna load this like this okay and I bring it in like this making sure I don't hit that edge on anything and you see how it just slipped in and then I'm gonna take this this is so revolutionary I love this thing and you see how it goes right in there and you can get it close okay I do a quick adjustment I'm gonna give it a, a quick tighten right here just so I can eyeball my blade okay now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen it just a little and I'm gonna bring it back so the blade is not exposed at all and I can feel it. Okay, so the other part is an adjustable throat. Okay. And right here, 
everything on this is so precision ground but I'll show you why in a few minutes but you see how that opens up and closes mm -hmm. okay so I'm gonna open it up all the way and I'll show you why an adjustable throat in just a few minutes okay okay so the other thing you're gonna notice on here are these depth skids and I'm gonna leave them on for the time being because it gives me extra support all right, which it does, but also I'll show you how to use the depth skids cool. to do some final thicknessing of really small material. All right, sounds good. So let's go over to the other bench. Let's do it. So let's set depth on this before we get going. Okay. Okay. So uh, one of the things I want to point out is this. You don't have to loosen it a ton to get the forward momentum. Actually, let's take a quick swipe. I'm not getting anything right nope. now. Okay. Now I'm going to just loosen it a little. And I do it about a quarter turn. And you're gonna, nope. So you just gotta work up to it, just like this. Another. Okay, almost got it. Let's just get the right pressure. Almost, not taking much. Just a hair more. And like I said, just a fine adjust. It's so thin, too, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna start, see how I'm starting to get that. So let's just, and it's very thin. So I might give it a little bit more bite. Just like that, and you just work your way up, just like that. And I'm gonna give it a little more. Okay, now, you see the distance? Let me get this to point it out a little. Distance from here to here. I wanna break that shaving to help prevent tear out. So I'm gonna bring it in, just like this. I need the clearance, okay, for the chip to come through, because that actually breaks it right here. So I'm gonna take it like this, and you're gonna see, look at that shaving. Oh, wow. And that little bit, look how perfect that is. Okay, so I'm gonna have you take that shaving just like that. Okay. Like that. Very nice. Remember, just like a, a big bench plane, okay? You wanna put pressure here on the front. Okay. And then a nice and steady, there you go. So that's a really nice finish on there. That's a sign of a really sharp blade. Yeah. Okay. So, well, okay. So I have a, a bench plane at home. Mm -hmm. You helped me set it up. It's great. Mm -hmm. But with the block plane, what is the okay. actual application for it? Okay. So um, there's several applications. Man, this is light. Right? Okay. But the majority of the time I'm using a block plane, it's right here in my pouch. Okay, I take it out and I'm knocking over. Feel that. You just hit this, say, with a bench plane. Feel that sharp edge? Yeah. Okay, you're knocking off edges like this. See, look. And you're going to see ever so slightly these little curls come off. You're what we call breaking an edge. Oh, okay. Okay, and it's just knocking it down. And you're going to see, look, it's a very minute chamfer on there. Yeah. Completely. And it's called breaking an edge. So that way there it's a little softer. It goes into assembly. You're not ruining any of your accuracy of your joinery. Okay. So that's one of the uses I use. The other one is this. Pretty simple. Um, let's just pretend. Ooh, let me just flip this over so you can see it. I already did it on that side. Okay, so say you're, um, and I'm gonna put a little more on this, just a hair more depth. Say you're, uh, you got a, this is a, a table leg. Okay. Okay, and of course, or chair leg, and people are gonna drag that across a, um, a floor. You don't want the breakaway. So what you always do is you chamfer the bottom of the leg, and I usually do it just like this. Just really quick, see, come over here so you can see this big D. See that? See oh, wow. I just broke that. It's just a really quick application for this. Same thing with this way. And you're just putting that, you're just breaking that edge really quick. Okay, and I'm gonna have you come over here and you're just gonna take it like this and come across. Okay. Just like this at an angle. And you do what you're doing. A... Look at that, man. He's a pro already. Do a little bit more. Okay. And, and when you do this, kind of angle it up. Because oh, okay. what's gonna happen is you wanna prevent what is known as spelching or breakaway oh, okay. there. So if you angle it up, you'll get that. That makes way more I'm sense. I'm gonna tell you, this is this little plane is gonna be part of my arsenal going forward. And it fits so nicely in your pouch. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> nice. So you have that uh, forward and back adjustment, which is really nice micro adjust, but this here is a really nice locking mechanism. I just dig that, that's a, um, that's a magnet. And 
you have that adjustable throat on there. There's a lot to this little mini plane. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> okay, so what we're gonna do now is we'll talk about the depth skids. Let's do it. All right, Sedge, let's talk about the depth skids. Okay. Like, first of all, why do I need those? Okay, I'll show you how to, first I'll show you how to set them and why. Let's talk about why. Let's okay. do that first. So say we're working with some really small stock like this, okay? And you can see there's some planar max and there are saw max. And we want these to be the same thickness. And you can see hopefully here that I have a little bit of a catch here. You'll see the saw marks on here. So I want to have consistent thickness. Okay. And that is what these are for. And I'll show you how to set those up. Sounds good. So I'm gonna take the, the thinnest one. I need this about nine millimeter. Okay, Chris, get in here. It's about nine and a half, 9.5 millimeter. So I needed about nine millimeter. So what I did is I made these two gauge blocks to set up. One of the things I did is I backed the, the plane blade away. We'll, we'll get that to hit perfect afterwards. But I'm just gonna take it like this. And these are, this is a five and a four domino. I put them together, they're exactly nine. And I'm gonna set it on there and I'll set these skids. So you just loosen these ever so slightly and they'll drop down. Nice. And I'll do this side as well. It's just really quick. I'll set them on my gauge blocks. I know it's exactly nine, just like that set it down, I'll hold them down, and I'll tighten them up, just like this. Make sure it's on a flat surface, okay? So it just comes out nice and even. And boy, is this precisely ground. So the thing you'll notice right here, there's a space, okay? This is the one that's measuring out about 9.75 this piece I need to bring it down so when I start going back and forth and taking swipes off of this what will happen is these will bottom out on either side and give you a perfect nine millimeter thickness so it's just a matter now of planing this and making sure your dog is not in the way and it's low enough and making sure that you'll you'll just take progressive cuts with it like this and you'll end up with the same thickness over time so let's take it over here and check it out when you start to lose that shaving being cut you know you're at the same depth there you go perfectly nine millimeters awesome so an overall takeaway for the mini block plane uh, from Bridge City Toolworks. I think it's a good uh, one to keep in our pouch. Um, it's all aluminum makeup. Um, the micro adjust on it is kind of for the um, depth setting kind of blew me away. And then utilizing these innovative depth skids. Fantastic. You can thicken a small material really quick. So as we always say in these videos, be positive and stay sharp.